Back in Daytona, the Gatorade duel, and Brian Vickers didn't win the race, but boy, does it feel like a win. Meanwhile, in Victory Lane, a very familiar picture. Dr. Dick Bergeron is standing by with our winner. Dale Earnhardt Jr., after going nearly two years without a win, switched teams, and now he is two for two here at Daytona. Well, how about that? What was the most difficult, most interesting, most fun moment of the race for you? It was pretty interesting with them old tires about midway through that race. Everybody sliding around, wrecking and carrying on. Made that pass down the back straightaway, got a run, and got, got underneath the 41 and the 12 for the lead. I didn't think I had the 12 cleared. I don't know if he lifted to let me have, because he just to uh, keep from, because I might have wrecked the field there, but <laughs> I come on up front of him. It must have just been inches. He had to have lifted a little bit, but he got a run on the inside of me there. That was pretty fun. Old tires are tough, man. It was all running up the top because we wreck on the bottom down there sliding around. But I'm uh, real proud of my team. They give it Bimley a great car. The engine uh, uh, guys work overnight to bring us uh, the replacement motors down here. They're great, as we see. And uh, I want to thank Amp National Guard, all our sponsors, all the fans. That was a fun race. I hope they enjoyed it. Oh, we did indeed. Everybody wanted to know how this new NASCAR car would run at Daytona. Your evaluation of it? Okay. Honestly, it's got to look great on TV. Um, it's harder to drive, but ain't we supposed to have to work hard, you know? I mean, it's hard to drive, but it's got to look great on TV. It sure looks, it sure is a handful in the car, and, and it reminds me a lot of old-style race cars. I've seen the way they slide around and get loose and stuff. So I think it's all right. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll tone them in and get them better, but so far, it got a good grade from me. Junior's all right, too. He may just be the best restrictor plate driver in all of NASCAR. Matty. Dick, the guy who had the e-ticket ride today, who felt like he won the race, is Brian Vickers. Now going back to lap two, walk us through your day so far. Wow, talk about adversity between the box and qualifying and this and the race. Yeah, the 15 uh, got to the outside and went to block him, um, and then the 60 just pushed up and, and got us. Uh, I don't know what he was if it, if it was out of his control there, if he just misjudged it. But uh, it was everything I could do to keep it off the wall, smoking the tires right there to keep it out of the inside wall. But it worked out. You know, Red Bull and Toy did a great job. Um, you know, and that's what this weekend was about for us, overcoming adversity. We had we had plenty of it, but I want to thank everybody on this team for working so hard. We did a great job in the race. Had a lot of friends out there that really helped me. You know, I, you know, Casey Mears pushed me a lot. The 78 took me took it easy on me there at the end. He knew he was locked in, and he probably could have come back and raised me, but he didn't. Describe the relief. Oh. It's like I won the race. I, I think last time I felt this good was when I won a race. I mean, the 50th uh, running the Daytona 500 special, but just the momentum, just to get the year started off right, you know. And and we also pitted. Uh, I had a vibration on the right rear, um, and uh, we were thinking about pitting anyway. And I just came to the pit road last year. If you remember correctly, we 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 didn't make the 500 because we blew a right rear. And uh, learning from those mistakes is uh, why we hit pit road early this time, and it paid off. What a difference a year makes. Brian Vickers, he'll be in the starting lineup for the 50th Daytona 500. Steve. Well, Matt, unfortunately, his teammate, A.J. Allmendinger, will not. So from the joy of making the race to the utter despair of not. And, A.J., uh, I think your face says it all right now. Yeah, pretty much sucks as bad as it can. I mean, that's uh, – unfortunately, you know, all my guys, uh, everybody at Red Bull, you know, they deserve to have two cars in. You know, that's good that Brian got in for, uh, for at least the guys back at the shop, but my guys deserve better than that. And just uh, – just never had the car right. We were just tight the whole time, and we, you know, we never had that in practice yesterday. So that threw us a little off guard, and you know, I ran my ass off trying to get back to it. One more lap, there might have been a chance, but uh, you know, it's just one of 36 races. It's not uh, the best way to start, but heck, we're starting a lot better than we did last year. So we we'll just go to California, be fine. But uh, it'll take the weekend to get over it. Thank you, Matt. And over here, we've got like the Wallace family reunion. You just got mugged by your brother. Yep. Congratula by the way, we've got about five minutes, so there's five plenty of Kenny good. Wallace time. Congratulations. Well, you are in the big show. Can you believe it? Well, my brother Mike is a hell of a race car driver, and everybody knows that. He's one of the best drafters, and he just odd man out in the 500 this year. It didn't make sense. So he, he, Mike had a hell of an attitude. I would have been down in the dumps crying in my motorhome, and, he, and, and Mike said, Herm, can I spot for you? And I said, hell yes, I said, because Mike's one of the best there is. And he just inspired me the whole time. And there were so many times that people cut me off, and I thought I was going to hit him. And, and at the end, Mike was like, just go. Just, I, just, just don't run into nobody. <laughs> Why did
did you why did you want a spot for me? Because I wanted you to make this the, the 50th Daytona 500. See, a few years ago, Kenny and I sat in his motorhome here, and we both didn't have a ride for the 500. And we we looked at each other and says, never again that we're not going to have something to drive down here. Well, I finished fourth in the Daytona 500 here last year. Didn't have a chance this year to run. He had a shot, had a fast car, and is like, my God, I know how. I mean, it's huge. It's well, my yeah. brother. I mean, my gosh, this is. We're Plus, the, when he gets paid, he's buying dinner because it pays a lot of money. To start we're this we're the only brothers that finish in the top ten every year at Daytona, and for some reason we're out of a ride. I, <laughs> I think it's I don't know why that why that is, but it does not matter. This is a great day, and I can I thank some people that were very instrumental. First of all, the story goes like this: I got fired by Furniture Row, and Barney Visser, the owner of Furniture Row, and Joe Garone said, "Hey, look, you know we realize that we shouldn't have fired you." We want to give you an opportunity, and Joe Garone called me up, and I want to thank Joe Garone, and I want to thank Barney very much. They said, we want to give you an opportunity to come back and make the Daytona 500 on your own terms. That's what they said to me, and that's the truth in front of millions of people. They let me drive this car with a Hendrick motor in it, and I want to thank Barney Visser, Joe Garone, for letting me prove my talent, and, and send a message to every great race car driver out there that, look at me. I mean... I made the Daytona 500 because Jay I had... Wallace made the I, Daytona 500. Yeah. Well, no, you know what? You know what? Bill, Bill Elliott once told me, he says, Herm, he says, you always have shoelaces hanging out of your mouth because I always have my foot in my mouth. But the reality of it is, is that I always just tell the truth and I catch hell for it all the time. But the truth is this. My brother Mike finished fourth in the Daytona 500 last year. Kenny Schrader, all these guys in their 40s are hell of a race car drivers. And you just got to have equipment, man. And this is, you know, I mean, that's all there's to it. Just tell them now how happy you are. Woo! Earnhardt! There you go. That's the happy smile. Now let's go to Krista. And it is the story of the Gatorade duel, the highest of highs, the incredible lows. These are the results from Gatorade duel number one. Dale Earnhardt Jr., obviously our winner, but the big story comes further back as you see the guys who made it and who did not. Kenny Wallace finished eighth, but he's in the show, as is Ryan Vickers. And this is just the beginning. We knew it would be heartache for some and hearts on fire for others. These are the guys who will be watching the Daytona 500 the same way you and I will. A.J. Allmendinger, Bill Elliott, Sterling Marlin, and Carl Long. But we are just getting started. There's a whole another Gatorade duel to go, and you will have a front row seat.